It's summertime. What better way to celebrate summer than some pork ribs on the grill? Today, we're gonna to show you the difference between pork spare ribs and baby backs. We're gonna show you where they come from. We're gonna prep them, we're gonna season them, and we're gonna take them through the entire process all the way through the grilling, and we're gonna taste test them, so follow along. So what we have here is an entire pig. We are going to get one spare rib and one baby back per half, giving us a total of two spare ribs and two baby backs. Let's just get started and I'll show you how to extract them out of this pork and how to prep them to be seasoned. A lot of this we've already explained in other videos that are on our channel, so I'm not gonna go into real deep detail on you know all the different angles and cuts and the other items on this hog. We're just gonna go right for the ribs. So if I move along at kind of a rapid pace without explanation, that's why. Now that we have the hams removed, we're gonna set this half up on the saw and we're gonna start slicing and dicing. So we're gonna go ahead and separate this pork belly and these spare ribs from this loin. So here's our fresh side, here's our spare ribs and we're just going to go ahead and pull those out and show you how to prep them. So what I like to do is I like to take my Victorinox and score that membra membrane right there along the bottom of those ribs. And then I take my knife and I cut right through this little flap of meat but not cutting too deep because located right underneath here is that pork fresh side which we're going to make into bacon so we definitely don't want to put a bunch of cuts in that pork belly. You can use the pork belly for a number of things. You can make bacon, you can make pork burn ends. We typically use it for bacon around here because who doesn't love bacon? So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these spares out of there just like that. I'm going to square my belly up. Like I said, today it's about ribs, so we're not going to go into detail on the process of making bacon. Maybe we'll save that for another date. So if you take a meat hook, that's what we like to use. Just get right underneath this membrane on these ribs. You can use a paper towel. You can use your apron, something to give you a just a little bit of grip. And if you buy pre-packaged ribs, just remember before you put these on the smoker, make sure that that's removed. If you leave that on your rib, it's gonna make for a real unpleasant bite, sort of chewy, so we definitely don't want that. So what we have here is your traditional pork spare rib. This rib's gonna have some excess bone, this is that brisket bone right here, and then it has some cartilage along the bottom. What we like to do is we like to turn these into St. Louis style ribs. And to do that, you can just take your knife and just cut it right down along the bottom. Because what this does, if you can save these, you can smoke them. These make nice little riblets. But when you prep your ribs like this, what happens then is after they're smoked, you can just cut down in between each rib, making it a real nice single rib bite with no excess bone on the bottom. So there's the first St. Louis style rib that we pulled out of that first half. Now I'm going to prep this loin. I'm gonna remove this back fat and then I'm gonna pull the baby back ribs out of this so I can show you the difference between the 
St. Louis and the baby backs. Can't tell me you didn't like that. First of all, what we want to do is remove this pork tenderloin. Just pull that tenderloin out. Now we're going to remove the sirloin. Now that we have the sirloin removed and the tenderloin, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to score it right along that membrane. Now I will mention, if you see country style ribs in the store, those we typically get, sometimes we'll trim this last bone off right here, but four ribs long, country style rib comes right off the end of this loin. Today we're not going to cut the country style ribs because we're going to try to extract as many baby backs as we can. The baby back ribs are these little ribs located right against the vertebrae on this pork loin. So you have the, the pork loin running right along the back of these ribs. So that's why the price, you go to the store, baby backs are gonna be a little bit more expensive because they're more a desirable rib because they are loin meat on those. So let's just go ahead and get started. So here, you kind of have to make a little bit of a call when you do this because obviously we're, we're talking about loin meat, so we don't want to cut into that loin and take too much away from those pork chops, but we do want to leave a little bit of meat on these ribs also. So I like to cut down along the back of those ribs like that, then we'll flip it over. Scoring it, and this should just fall right out. That is gonna be the baby back rib. And I'm going to finish it on the bandsaw. In the meantime, we're gonna trim this up a little bit. Beautiful boneless pork loin, tenderloin, and sirloin. But here again, we're not talking about those, we're talking about ribs. So I used my bandsaw and I cut through the vertebrae on the back of these because here again, you want these to be able to separate once they're, they've been cooked. That way you can just take your knife, cut down in, in between each individual rib and you can serve these without any you know, bone, little bone pieces on the bottom and makes them more desirable. So there's the baby backs. Here's the St. Louis. That's one half of a pig. Let's go ahead and do the second half. While Seth's breaking out that second half, I'm gonna give him the magic touch. Today, I've got our house bucket of Hollywood and a, uh, a shaker of Hollywood. I'm going to be putting the Hollywood blend seasoning on the ribs. We love the Hollywood for pork. And brief history on Hollywood, how we came up with the name. Seth, well, somebody reached out to us from a production company about doing a new uh, show for American television called The Butcher. Seth wound up traveling to Hollywood, California last year so that he could film the show. While he was out there, we'd been working on a recipe which was our original blend, but with the addition of cane and brown sugar. 
something to sweeten it up. So while he was out there, we got to thinking about it. So we decided for a limited edition, we would do a Hollywood blend to commemorate his trip to Hollywood. Well, it stuck and it's become one of our more popular blends. So this is our original blend seasoning with the addition of cane and brown sugar. And what that does, it adds just this great, especially on pork, it adds this great benefit of some sweetness. And um, the great thing about getting a bucket like this, you have 72 ounces in a bucket, which comes out to 12 shakers. Plus we send you the shaker. And what we do is we refill our shaker right out of the bucket. I know at home, it's really important for me to have one of these buckets. Comes with the scoop, and that's a really nice way to make sure that you have plenty of seasoning. This goes back on, snaps in place. It's got a tight seal, and you always have plenty of beer to butcher blend seasoning on hand. So, cool thing about Hollywood is that you're guaranteed to be the most famous person on your neighborhood block when you use it. So. It's gonna make you a star of it's gonna your make own. You gonna make you a star you're gonna be walking the red carpet remember seasoning nice and high get you the a most even coat I'm gonna show you after I do these two racks of st. Louis spare ribs and my two racks of baby back just how much of the seasoning that I used now here's a pro tip I've got a, a, a liner inside this tub and it's really gonna let me soak up all this seasoning because I can roll these ribs around you can do the same thing with a bag at home. So you get a nice large bag, you can put the meat in it. Here you see I'm kind of tamping that in, making sure that I get a nice rub. I thought that was called Scott's Hot Tip. Scott's Hot Tip. That's what I say whenever I give you one of these recommendations. We like to use a liberal amount to get that beautiful flavor on these. Doesn't that look amazing? Be the worst day of your life. Yeah, right. <laughs> we uh, we some folks have talked about uh, speculated which one of us would win in a in a fight or a wrestling match, and I'm going to tell you folks, we we settled the, that Depends. long time ago. Depends on I beat him three times in a row, and then he he cried uncle every time he saw me from then on. So depends if I have a knife or not. <laughs> Don't bring a knife to a gunfight, sir. Look at that. Just look at it. I used my entire shaker, and in this case, I'd be running in despair to beardofbutchers.com to order another shaker, but I don't have to, because I have 12 more right here in my bucket. That's the great thing about it. Now I'm gonna use my uh, pro tip to just Snag up the rest of this out of the bottom of this bag so no seasoning is wasted. I think we've got it. So look at that. Now, another pro tip, Scott's hot tip. I think I've given this one before. Double up your gloves and now I've got clean gloves. What beauties, two racks, St. Louis style spare ribs, two racks, baby back ribs, came off of this pig that we butchered right here in house, masterfully crafted by none other than Seth Perkins himself. Now we're gonna put them on the smoker, the Traeger 885 Ironwood, and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna use the, um, the 3-2-1 method, we're big fans. 
Works great, turns out some incredible ribs. We'll be wrapping with butcher paper and um, I'm already hungry. I haven't, eat, I haven't eaten anything yet today. Yeah, so follow along and we're gonna get these on the grill. Let's Off go. to the smoker. Dilly dilly. I really, <laughs> I really wish somebody's lazy butt would help me carry some of this stuff. I'm kind of liking the view from this side of the table. Went in and got all of our house bucket sauce, the whole bit, getting ready to get started here. Yum. The time has come to put these ribs on the grill. So <clears throat> I mentioned the, the three, two, one method, which is basically what we're gonna be doing, just a slight a slight variation of the three, two, one method. Um, actually, I've got the grill at 275, and I'm gonna load it up, and I'm gonna let them go for pretty much two hours at 275, and then we're gonna wrap, and we're gonna go another, it's probably actually gonna be about two and a half hours on the first on the first round at 275. We'll kind of take a look at them and then we'll come come back out for the wrap. Now these got to sit overnight in that Hollywood blend rub. So they're gonna be super marinated and I'm certain super delicious. So there we have it. Our two racks of baby back, our two racks of St. Louis spare. Gonna go in here and smoke over hickory for about two and a half hours. And then we're gonna wrap. I'm gonna spritz about every hour, pretty much when I see them drying out. I've got a mixture here of apple cider and broth. So when these start to dry out after a little bit, I'll come back out and spritz them. But right now, we just let them sit in the smoke bath. Oh my, mahogany colored meat, straw colored fat. That's what we like to see. These are looking amazing. So two and a half hours in, let's go ahead and get them wrapped. So I'm using peach paper to wrap these. Um, you can use aluminum foil. You can use peach paper, butcher paper. The difference being if you use use aluminum foil that's going to trap a hundred percent into the package if you use peach paper it's going to let some of the juices um, evaporate and you're going to get this you're going to keep your nice bark oh those are just looking amazing so wrap each one tightly Back onto the Traeger they'll go. All right, there you have it. Two more hours, we'll take a look at these. We're gonna sauce some, we're gonna actually, we're gonna do Rebel Red on half of a baby back, which is our Habo Maganera, ha, Mango Habanera hot sauce. And then we're gonna do our Whisker Lickin' Good barbecue sauce on the other half of just one baby back rib, leave the rest plain. So that way we get a way to sample all three flavors Rebel Red, Barbecue, and Plain. Well, Hollywood, dry rub season. Check back in a couple hours. We'll see how they look. Time to unwrap. They, it feels like about the right time, so let's take and uh, let's just set the, the ribs out here. 
take a look at them. See how we're looking. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that pullback on these. Oh, that is, I just actually just had to push that one rib back in there because it was wanting to come out. So I'm gonna unwrap these. And then I'm going to actually just for, just for proof, I mean, we can lose a bone. It's not a big deal. There's our baby backs. There's our first rack of St. Louis style spares. I tell you what, the smell, the smell alone is worth the trip. The smell is absolutely marvelous on these. Don't they just look amazing? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually going to zip this one in half and I'm gonna zip this one in half. Look at that. Then I'm accidentally gonna drop one of those in there. I'm gonna put barbecue sauce on, well, forgot I had a brand new bottle here, so we're gonna use that trick. Barbecue sauce on half there, barbecue sauce on half there, Rebel Red. Now the viscosity on Rebel Red is a little bit thinner, so I can expect that to run a little bit more than the barbecue. Put these on here. Oh yeah, spread that around. Now what I intend to do is go ahead and stick these guys back on for about 20, 30 minutes tops just to set that sauce and get a, just a nice little bit of crunchy crispy on the outside of here. All right, let's just go ahead and set those on there. Let's dial it up. Let's say 375, an additional 100 degrees. Give them, uh, let's give them 15, 20 minutes, and then let's eat. Oh, meat candy. So by turning it up like that, we just get that really nice, a little bit of crispiness. Everything just sets up. Now we're gonna set them out here. Look at, look at that. Look at how that barbecue sets because of that viscosity that we've got in it. And trust me, it tastes better than it looks, folks. There you have it, pretty maids and all, all in a row. We're gonna give them a minute to uh, cool off a little bit and we're gonna give them a taste test. Now it's time for the big taste test. Um, we're gonna go from plain to barbecue. I just gotta, I gotta taste them by myself because I don't know where Seth is. <laughs> Man, I thought I smelled something. I've been, just, in there, I've been in there working my hind end off and you've been out here screwing around. I know that's not true. These are going to be the plain. This is the dry rub. The, the, the plain Hollywood season um, St. Louis spares. Mmm. Mmm. Fall off the bone. No, 
Now save room because we got to go through, wow, three different versions of this rib. I'm definitely picking up the, uh, that's wonderful. Definitely picking up the sugar now, in, the, in the Hollywood This is going to be the, the barbecue. I'll wait for you. Ooh, ooh. That takes it to a whole new level. Whole new level, oh my goodness. So with the dry rub, a little bit more of the meat flavor. Definitely got that nice dry rub. Then when you get to the barbecue, you just get that nice tangy. Very good. Now we're gonna get into the Rebel Red. You know what? You wanna to go to the baby back? I think we should try the baby back. Keep the palate yep. kind of cleanse. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to make our mouths burn. I'm, I, I, you know what? I'm not even going to use the knife. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just gonna. Just gonna do it this this way. So this is going to be the dry the Hollywood. Yep. Oh. So tender. Now the baby back definitely meatier. You got to remind. Uh, remember, as we showed you when we were cutting this pig, the baby back has that loin meat. The St. Louis spares. You know, we, we love bacon around here, and that's where that bacon comes right off of this side. So don't don't give us too much trouble about not being meaty enough. We wanted the bacon off of this pig too, so. If you butcher a pig at home yourself, you can basically make them as meaty as you want. That's Just that's remember that you're right. going to sacrifice that pork belly, which you turn into bacon if you do that. This is Barbecue rubble. baby back. Barbecue baby back. Barbecue baby back. Say that ten times real mm -hmm. fast. Mm. Well, I'm loving the barbecue over just a dry rub because it just takes it to a whole new level. Now we're gonna go to the Rebel Red. It's gonna give you a. I'm gonna tear off a chunk and I'm gonna get a chunk here so that way we can leave room for more. Slow down a little bit. I know, I'm, right? I'm trying to enjoy it. We got it all night. Yeah. Ooh. Nice That's tang. really nice. It's got a really nice element of like, just kind of a sort of subtle, tangy, but definitely a little bit of heat, but not not so hot that you can't enjoy it. Yeah. And you can prepare this for people that don't even like hot stuff, and they'd still be able to tolerate this. Definitely not not too hot. So now we're going to be on to the uh, the Rebel Red baby backs. I'm getting quite the pile of bones here. Whoa. Save I don't it. know what the wives have planned for supper tonight, but I'm pretty sure we're already going to be full. I think it's going to be ribs. Yeah. Awesome. Right? For me personally, well, the baby back, definitely a, a, a meatier rib. Obviously having that loin meat on there. I'm going to go with the, my personal favorite being the barbecue baby back. I think that's uh, the most flavor. Um, the dry rub, absolutely perfect. But that barbecue adds just uh, a, a tanginess that, that it's so desirable. Rebel Red, again, good. Of course, you could use our hot rub if you wanted to make that even hotter. Yeah, depends on what you like. And um, I, I, I do have to say, I think I'm going to have to agree with Scott and go with the baby back with just the barbecue on it. Incredible. Delicious cook. Nice job, man. Thank you. Good job cutting. So there nice. you have it. We hope you enjoyed the video. We explained the spare rib, the St. Louis style spare rib, the baby back rib. We took it from that pig that we butchered right to the Traeger 885, right to the table. Turned out a great product. We want to remind you, we use the Hollywood dry rub on here. You can get it in the 4.5 pound bucket. We've got the 5.5 ounce Sorry, shaker. Spencer. And as well as the barbecue sauce, you can get it in the 12 ounce or the 64 ounce half gallon, which what we found just like the shakers of seasoning, the barbecue sauce and the Rebel Red, we needed a bigger size. They come with a flip cap. You just set them right over top of your, um, your 12 ounce bottle. You refill them as needed. So we've got the barbecue sauce and the Rebel Red, both in the 12 ounce and the 64 ounce. We hope you enjoyed the video. We want to thank you for watching all of our subscribers. Thank you so much for clicking that subscribe button. 
Remember, turn on your notifications so you hear from us every time we upload a new video. We're the Bearded Butchers from White Feather Meats. We want to thank you and remind you, stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming for you in the future. Until next time, see ya. Here you go. Who wants to try it, Rich? Oh, okay. oh, oh, Andy. Yeah, no, you, you got it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Andy already had Hannah's three like, I'm not going to lose my I'm fingers really over a rib. So here's a real taste test. Here we go. Mm. What do you think, guys? So good. Mm. Good. How is it? Mass Get in here. Get in here, Landon. Get a, get a rib. Get a rib. Charlie wants some. Oh. <laughs> we're, oh, sorry, we're getting down to just the bones now. Yummy. I guess there won't be any ribs for supper. <laughs>